Right now on CBS4 this morning, vice presidential candidates are back on the debate trail after their one and only debate. We're going to have highlights coming up. And of course, what everyone's talking about, that fly on top of Mike Pence's head. Oh my goodness, that fly. And this story, multiple people, maybe a dozen, now without homes after a devastating apartment fire in Denver. And I just got the phone call that my mother's building is burning down. And man, a lot of families out here hurting right now. And good morning from Colorado's Weather Center. The sun will be up just after 7 a.m. And just like yesterday, we're going to have a lot of wildfire smoke in the air, and we're going to have very warm temperatures. This is day five of our seven-day heat wave. Much more on your weather coming up. From Colorado's News Channel, this is CBS4 This Morning. Good morning, everyone. It's Thursday, October 8th. I'm Dominic Garcia. It is great to see you. I'm Britt Marino. Thanks for joining us this morning. And we just learned this morning the next presidential debate happening a week from today is held virtually for safety concerns about the president's during this COVID-19 diagnosis that President Trump received. And today, vice presidential candidates going to be back on the campaign trail following what was a much more civil debate last yeah. night. Kamala Harris and Mike Pence took the stage in Salt Lake City. And the tone last night, as Dominic just mentioned, was really really different than the first presidential debate that we witnessed between President Trump and Democratic candidate Joe Biden. However, all the buzz, so to speak, I use that word intentionally because this fly landed on Vice President Pence's head. And you might be saying at home, so what? Well, the fly stayed there for about two minutes. And the viral moment is a big distraction, causing a bit of a laugh for people at home and on social media. The fly even has its own Twitter handle now with nearly 100 thousand followers this fly more popular than you Dominic uh, a lot more followers than <laughs> besides me. the fly however the coronavirus pandemic was the focus this debate looked much different than the last one candidates were sitting 12 feet apart with plexiglass between them vice president Pence is chair of the White House coronavirus task force team eight months into the pandemic with the US recording the most deaths from the virus in the nation Pence defends the Trump administration's decisions take a listen well, the American people have demonstrated over the last eight months that when given the facts, they're willing to put the health of their families and their neighbors and people they don't even know first. And President Trump and I have great confidence in, in the American people and, and their ability to take that information and put it into practice. The American people have witnessed what is the greatest failure of any presidential administration in the history of our country. And here are the facts. 210,000 dead people in our country in just the last several months. Over 7 million people who have contracted this disease. One in five businesses closed. The candidates debated health care and the Affordable Care Act, as well as racial injustice in our nation. Harris is the first woman of color to appear on a debate stage of this caliber. The next presidential debate is a week from today, as we mentioned. And again, it is a virtual one because the president has a positive COVID-19 diagnosis. The candidates will debate from separate remote locations. The moderator, we're told, is based in Miami. Trump said the debate will be great, and Biden said he's looking forward to it but that if the president is still sick, they shouldn't have a debate at all. Colorado counties start mailing out ballots tomorrow. They should reach your mailbox within a few days, along with the blue book if you haven't already received it. You can vote early by mailing your ballot in, or you can drop it off at a ballot drop-off box. We have a list of all the amendments and ballot measures at cbsdenver.com, along with those drop-off locations. Number of registered voters in Colorado between the ages of 18 and 29 is higher than ever before. Still many say the problem is actually submitting a ballot. Campus Election Engagement Project is a nation nonpartisan group, and it points out some young voters are discouraged this election. Many are unhappy with both candidates, but some students say they are looking forward to their first opportunity to vote. So we're all excited, you know, none of us could vote like for or against Trump last time. Colorado ballot itself poses some problems and might look overwhelming. It has 11 statewide ballot issues and 21 presidential candidates. Voting experts say people need roughly 22 years of education to really fully understand it. Number one reason all voters opt out is because they don't feel informed enough to vote. 
At least a dozen people living in this apartment complex over my shoulder in Denver have lost their homes and many of their belongings. A fire tore through the building yesterday evening. Michaelia White is live off Virginia Avenue this morning for us. And Mech, I do understand the damage is just devastating. It is, Britt. In fact, 12 units are displaced because of this fire, and a lot of families are having to find a new place to stay uh, temporarily. So we want to show you some video from Copter 4 where you can see the roof, the building destroyed by the blaze. Now, the fire started around 4 yesterday afternoon. Denver Fire was able to get the fire under control a little after 5 p.m. They worked throughout the day to extinguish remaining hot spots. Now, we also had a crew at the scene. Residents and witnesses tell us it's definitely not an easy time to have to deal with losing a home and their hearts go out to them. Here is what they had to say. Um, it's water damage, smoke damage. The roof is coming down. People losing everything during the pandemic is pretty messed up. And no residents did have any reported injuries. Two dogs did die. Now, we don't know yet what caused the fire, but we will we'll be working to learn more throughout the morning here. For now, though, we're live in Denver. McKellia White covering Colorado first. Such a tough time for these people. Thank you, Mac. Investigators want help finding the people responsible for burning a memorial site three times. Dante Chambers was hit and killed by a car near the RTD station at Parker Road and Peoria. It happened May 25th when he was crossing the street. His family put up this memorial there to honor his life, but they say seeing it burned adds to their pain. I've tried to mourn, and this is just making it worse. And every day it just keeps coming up and coming up. Crime Stoppers is offering up to a $2,000 reward for any information about who these suspects might be. They are described as white women in their late 20s or early 30s. Happening today, the pretrial begins for a father accused in his son's death. Mark Redwine is charged with second-degree murder and child abuse connected to the death of Dylan Redwine. This is a case that has been years in the making. Dylan was reported missing from his father's home in Laplata County November 12th. He was visiting him over Thanksgiving. Dylan's remains were found in 2013 and again in 2015 near Viacita Reservoir. Mark Redwine's trial was postponed last August after issues with his attorney. Let's get the very latest on coronavirus this Thursday morning in Colorado. We have Mackenzie in the CBSN Denver studio. And the headline this morning, Mackenzie, is students going back to campus. Right, Britt, that's at least true for the University of Colorado in Boulder, which says it's ready to return to in-person classes on October 14th. Now, CU went to remote learning and ordered students to stay home two weeks ago. That was after the campus had hundreds of COVID cases. There are now two new health orders in Boulder County to help those cases stay down among young adults. One requires collegiate group homes, mainly fraternities and sororities, to submit isolation, quarantine, and testing plans to the county. The other sets a framework for the gathering sizes for people 18 to 22 year olds. Now it's all based on cases within that age group and testing among CU students. Meanwhile, we've learned that two sororities at the University of Denver are now suspended. This after they held gatherings larger than 10 people over the weekend. Now, both violations of the public health order are being investigated. And in Fort Collins, the university is running out of room for students with COVID who are living on campus. Right now, 21 students are quarantined in dorms, 17 had to do their quarantine in off-campus housing, and 60 others are at hotels across the street from campus. Now, with 30,000 students, it's nearly impossible to completely avoid the virus. But CSU says wastewater and spit testing lets it isolate cases quickly. Dorm sewage is being monitored for the presence of COVID-19, and when it is detected, students in those dorms then submit saliva samples. The samples are tested on campus, and the results are back with in the next day. We'll identify students and remove them from the dorms and isolate them while we allowed the other individuals that tested negative to continue their daily activities, which expedites contact tracing and quarantining and allows us to stay on top of any outbreaks that we might encounter. It's just fascinating. The university says it's able to identify who has COVID before students are able to identify it themselves. CSU's positivity rates are four times lower than CU Boulder's. And we had a lot going on when it comes to COVID and our schools and universities. I'll send it back to you guys. We just want people to stay out of the hospital and healthy. Thank Absolutely. you, Mackenzie. Yeah, we appreciate it.
Let's get to meteorologist Ashton Altieri now. So we're clocking in at 49 degrees. Uh -huh. I know things are heating up, right? Things are going to heat up back into record territory. In fact, this afternoon as we soar into the 80s later today, Britt. Uh, for now, most of us are either uh, just shy of 50 or just over 50. Uh, so either side of 50 degrees in the metro Denver. Cooler in Weld County, Firestone has now dropped down to 38 44 in Windsor, 40 in Greeley. You get up along that South Platte River Valley, it's almost always cooler regardless of what time of year it is, and, and that's certainly the case this morning. But take a look at this afternoon. We should top out around 69 in the afternoon this time of year. Instead, we have 87 degrees in the forecast, so more than 15 degrees above normal today. The record for this date set 110 years ago is 85 degrees. So that's, been a, that's a record that's been around for a long time, and I think we're going to crush it coming up this afternoon. And even hotter on the Eastern Plains, Yuma 90, Burlington 90, Lamar 93. This is getting to be really late in the season to still have 90-degree heat day after day on the Plains, but we've got two more days of this after today. Heat wave will finally subside second half of the weekend. So mostly clear skies here across our state. All we're going to have in the sky today is more smoke. What we're watching here is this storm system that's off the coast of Oregon. This is what's going to bring change our way, again, starting on Sunday. We'll talk much more about it coming up here in just a few minutes. I'll see you guys in the studio. Okay, thanks, Ashton. Looking forward to it. Time now, 610, and we do appreciate you starting your day with us on a Thursday morning. Coming up, some frustration after a gender reveal party leaves behind a mess on a local trail. Tonight's lineup is brought to you by the Lodge Casino. As always, your first choice for fun and your first choice for winning. Lodge!